Morning everybody, this is Phil Beck with the professional painter and decorator up at Brewers of Mansfield this morning for the Benjamin Moore on tour roadshow. So um, without further ado, do Barney McGrew, because you know I love that dibble and grub. Let's um, crack on and let's see what we've got inside this pod. Now, um, just quickly, Benjamin Moore, have a look on their website because on down the country they've got this pod moving around different brewers um, sites not every single one but a lot of them so if you want to get down to your local brewers when they've got Benjamin Moore on tour and on the floor please um, come and join um, the guys and gals um, at your local brewers right I've made, managed to get into the inner sanctum by special invite dormant on the door of this pod and now we're going to um, see what we've got on offer. So bear with me. Let me just see um, some test sample products before I come back and review what I'm seeing. I'll say it as it is. Right, I'm here in the pod and I said I'd come back to you and let's have a look at some paints now. I'm with my old friend, my old mucker, Ben Adams, that I, re I remember from <laughs> other paint brands many years ago. So we've got a... Uh, a familiar connection. Now I'm going to swivel the camera around and Ben's going to talk you through the paints that we've got on demo today up at Brewers of Mansfield. So I'll let Ben do the talking. Thanks for coming down Phil, good to see you. Um, so yeah, we're here at Mansfield today, um, it's going really well, what time is it? It is half past eight and the sausage rolls are almost gone, so we need to go and get some more. But yeah, so we've got um, a plethora of products here today to show everybody. First the one I'll start with is Element Guard. So Element Guard, we launched this product um, about a month ago. This is a brand new product that's been more really high opacity, um, high quality, durable masonry paint. It's in a matte finish. It can be applied down as low as one degree. Uh, it's rain resistant in 60 minutes, which obviously is good for the UK. Um, and do you want to give it a roll out? Do you want to have a little go? Oh, you can have a roll out. Yeah, have a, you can have a roll out. Yeah. Ben's going to do a roll out for us. No one judge me. Yeah, nobody judge him on his rolling skills. I'm not a skilled painter or decorator. Working out a roller tray. It's very amateurish, you know what I'm like for... Right. And Ben, what sort of roller sleeve are you using on this? Just a medium pile. Just a medium pile, microfiber. Microfiber, yes. Now this, this setup that I've got here, we've got here, is, uh, is Benjamin Moore branded. Um, so this is available uh, from us direct and also the number of um, our retailers. Um, so there's a sleeve there and the cage. I think that is made for Blue Tiger. So we've got a Benjamin Moore um, dedicated OEM sleeve and frame. So that's good. Right. Now I'm I'm looking at this. I can see a slight, as you'd expect, with an orange peel of a a roller, but. I know what Benjamin Moore paints are like. That'll flow out and even, if you can, uh, you can't see it, that'll even, you won't see any of that orange peel because we've just got a medium power roller. A long sleeve pile like a sheepskin would still keep um, an orange peel on there. Yeah, um, Ben's not a painter. He's not a painter. I'll leave it to the pros. But um, well, that's right. That's the cheapest one. What I'm excited about next is to take you to our newest product in our lineup of paints for walls, which is called Ben Matt. Right, Ben Matt. But it's not. Um, it's a it's a really it's a really exciting product to be fair. Um, so to add to our lineup in our high performance wall paints, we have Ben. Ben is a class one durable product, so you, you compare it to uh, other paint brands that are you know maximum durability, so you can scrub it all day long. It will not uh, leave a mark, it will not burnish, it will not come off on a cloth. Um, we do have other products, obviously, in this in this lineup for the wall. We have Regal, we have Aura, Regal, available in the basically new brushing level, same as Aura. Ben is just available in the mat. In America, um, Ben's been on sale for a number of years now, and they have it in a couple of different sheen levels. But for us in the UK, we've gone to mat, because that's going to be the most common sheen level and the most desired one. When this is dry, you're looking around in kind of 2 or 3% sheen level. So what we tend to find, what we've been hearing quite a lot recently, is that for other manufacturers' durable mats, they tend to have to compromise on the sheen level. So you might get a maybe 4 or 5% sheen. So if you've got any unevenness in your, in your surface, maybe not, not the best plastering, 
Or you look down the wall and you can see that horrible kind of flash. You're like still sitting, level. which yeah. we know your five percent will be here ticker it up to the five. Yeah. 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 I mean, that, I mean that, that's, a, that's a great product, great, Optiva yeah. 3 is, yeah. is good as well. Um, but this product sits around a 2-3% oh, shield. Yeah. So when it's dry, you look down that wall and it's dead flat. Yeah. Uh, if anybody's looking at the camera and they're looking at the, looking at the camera, looking at the screen now, if you look in your top left-hand corner, um, I did a review on this a number of weeks ago that you'll probably have already seen. If not, click the link, please. It's very good. It's a really good demonstration for picture framing here in this pod as well, because we've been, this is the fifth day now for the show. Um, we're using the same piece of plaster board, and every morning from half seven to half ten at each location, decorators come in, they're trying these paints and they're rolling them, and then they're leaving it for 15, 20 minutes, trying another one. Someone else comes along, rolls it, and it's all blended, and there's yeah. not a single, you can't tell where. So, in effect, it's like touching up walls. Yeah, so no, it's given, we're not trying, we've not tried yeah. to. To show that, but just by what we're doing, we, we've, we've shown it. Um, yeah. It blends in constantly. You can't see where you've been, so no picture frame in here. So no, that's fair. Um, what I want to ask you, uh, I'm going to swivel the camera around. And I'll get us both on it. Uh, we're back. What I want to focus. What I want to ask you, Ben, is I'm hearing from people who are in Canada that use this quite a lot, and they say that this. I don't know whether it's Ben or whether it's the Aurora, are paints that they over in the States and Canada are using on woodwork and trim yeah. all in one. So when a customer wants a wall color that's, I don't know, a green, yeah. but they also want the woodwork stroke trim, and you yeah. know I hate the word trim, because <laughs> trimmer on cars, um, so, they, can, they can use the same paint. Why don't we do that? Why is that not promoted here? Which are the paints that you can use on the wall and your woodwork, and it's a hard finish, Great all in one. Great so I'll ask the questions that nobody else has because that would actually save us a lot of money. Switching and you know what I mean, you've got to get a flat eggshell for your woodwork, you've got to get a flat mat for your wall to try and match it, and you know, we, al it we always get a mismatch on color. Yeah. If we can get the same color on the walls and the woodwork, yeah. what paint should we use? So yeah. back to you, Ben. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna say for Ben, stick to your walls for Ben. That, that's just where it's at home and it's going to give you the most durability and best finish. Paul, go back to your question on what can we use on walls and woodwork, I will be going for the Aura. Uh, the Regal can be used as well, the Aura comes in, I think it's four different sheet levels, um, matte, uh, probably being the most popular if you want that kind of finish. I will give you a product guide which talks about uh, the different sheet levels in each product, but yeah, for your walls and your woodwork, your trim, Aura, and then obviously we Scuff hate X. the word trim. Scuff X as well. Yeah, I think a lot of people forget. Scuff X is huge. Work everywhere. In the UK, it's most used for woodwork. Uh, for it's used really heavily on on walls. It's a very sort of commercialised product over there, so it's used throughout um, to give that unbeatable, um, you know. Scuff X finish, so yeah. Um. Right, I'll just ask you then, Ben, because the elephant in the room is price is putting a lot of decorators off. When I've demoed this paint on my YouTube channel and they say you're looking at less than four litres for Scuff X, which is 108 pounds, how do you feel that sits in the UK market? I think that. <laughs> Yeah, it's, uh, it's a question that we've been we've been asked quite a few times already in this road show. And what we'll say to it is, it's a false economy to buy something that's half the price that you're going to need twice as much of. With these products, yes, they're American sizes, it's a US gallon, so it's not your true five litre UK size. They vary depending on which base you go for, but the average amount is around the sort of 3.82 litre mark. If you go for a deep base, you'll have a bit less to allow for the colorant to top it up. But we'll call it a four, we call it a four yeah. litre. The, the opacity and how far that product will go based on the film thickness will outperform another, another manufacturer's five litre all day long. Um, in some cases, we talk about Scuff X and oh, you know, it's, it's a price point, we can't justify a can of Scuff X on a job. It's not gonna be for one job. If you buy it in a white, it will do three, four, five jobs. We had a guy on Tuesday who's done two five bed, five bed new builds from top to bottom, two coats. In Scuff X, you still got about a quarter left, so it yeah. goes for miles. So, yes, from a price point of view, uh, there are cheaper things out there, there are more expensive things out there, but when you look at performance, contractors that use Benjamin will make more money. Yeah, so that's where I think what I'll interact on that one and say is, quality remembered long after price is forgot, and I think in the UK, we've really got to get rid of this mindset of, when you're pricing up jobs, 
you're either getting probably customers to buy the paint and if you're telling the paint the customer what paint you want and it's scuff x and they go and say oh, that's 108 pounds they're not understanding why that is the 108 pounds whereas if you were pricing your job and you probably probably put in a, a quote together you would lose your labor and your materials all in the price the customer then won't know what paint you're using to the price of what that paint is. So I think we've got to start changing the mindset of the decorator in the UK to actually start looking at the quality of the paint, how much easier it is to apply, the coverage stroke, the opacity that that paint will give you, even though it's going to cost you a little bit more. Because as Ben says, there's no point buying something cheaper that's going to cost you more in the long run because you're needing five coats of paint. And we all know that from retail paint, stroke, trade paints. Trade paints have always been the better paint to be using, whereas your retail, well, we always laugh, don't we? Vinyl silk. Curveball, we like curveballs. You, you talked about price. Ben, Matt, and Aura, just looking at these two cans now, they're on acrylic paint and primer in one. Yes, I said it and we'll stand by it. We've got, we've got brand new sheet plasterboard here. And from day one, these, these products here have obliterated the, this, this substrate in two coats with ease. That can there, if you want to zoom in there, acrylic paint and primer. We talked about price. You're eliminating the need to miscoat the wall. You're eliminating the need to put in the labour to apply that miscoat and then do two coats of whatever you prefer. So it's, with this product, two coats, you can go straight onto new plaster, plaster board. Same for the bed mat as well there. So we're actually looking at price. Actually, it works out better in the long run for you guys. So anybody who just didn't hear that because might have been a bit quiet on the camera, with it being an acrylic product, you don't need to be miscoating it. Now, I know some of you are shouting and saying, yeah, but I can miscoat with a 10 litre tub of um, Wix, I don't know, contract matte emulsion, and it's only going to cost me 10 quid for a 25 litre, and I can do it that cheaply, and this is more money. You've seen it times many, that you put a quality paint over a cheap contract mat and you get that, you know, the moons, the little air bubbles coming through? That's because you're using a false opacity paint as your, your contract mat stroke wash coat. And I've always said, use a dedicated bare plaster primer for it. Yes, it costs you a little bit more money, but in the long run, you don't get the problems. And again, it's down to knowing your products to what works for you. And for me, I won't be using a cheap contract mat to wash coat and then go with a more expensive product over the top because I know that that surface that you put over the top is then softening up that wash coat stroke contract mat, making it want to breathe with that moisture and that's where your moons and your air bubbles are coming. So as Ben's saying, this paint eliminates the need for that wash coating. You would still thin down your paint um, to you put it on as a wash coat. You can do Phil, but genuinely uh, the paint is in the can ready to go. You don't need to, to, to dilute it. Well, that's very interesting. You're going to spray it then, yeah, but genuinely yeah. straight out the can. Consistency is perfect. Yeah. I mean, uh, we'll do a little bit. So we'll go yeah. to the bed now. Let's go back to the bed. Back to bed. Ben, big Ben. Ben's on the bed. Again, don't judge. Hold the plaster board, it's going to wobble otherwise, but you'll be able to just see, it's just it's so light, I can't get it on me. You pick it up. It's so good, you can't pick it up? I can't pick it up on the camera. I didn't pay him to say that. <laughs> it's such a light colour, it's not picking up on camera. It's a, Probably a pale, wow. pale we, sage. We on that blue one? Well, you can see it. Yeah, we can. Do. That will be a good opacity test, won't it? Yeah. <laughs> you know we're all going to go to bed tonight singing raspberry brush. Rasp Rasp raspberry blush. Yeah. That's a, that's our color of the year, and uh, that's the song that they made for us. Do you want to go this side? Yeah. So, so yeah. Uh, let's go into this colour now. That's better, we've got a uh, darker colour, this is probably like a, a teal. Yeah. Right, we've got Ben, with Ben, over Aurora. Aura. 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 Aura is a cool name, but it's Aura. Yeah. Aura. Aura. Because you're in awe of it. In awe. That's cringe. You'll have to take our word for it, I'm going to say that is covered for one. One the back roll. This was painted, uh, this this teal was painted about 10 minutes ago. I'm sure you painted over it yeah. now, but just to show you the, the opacity. 
decent. This is the one that you use recently. Yes, Ben. Yeah. I've used Ben, yeah. yeah. Lovely, and it went nicely for two coats. Price point, pretty, pretty good on that as well. I think Much it's... more competitive. Is that about £50 for the... 59 including yeah. that, for any colour. Yeah, 59, about three and a half thousand yeah. colours in there, yeah. So. And people are going to say to me, yeah, but it's not five litres, it's just less than four litres. But as we've been saying, the coverage power, as you've seen on that video in the top left-hand corner, it... I, I had plenty left over when I'd um, done my hallway passageway. Yeah. Um, so, have we covered it on that one? Is that fun? Yeah, we've covered it on that one. Just I want to get... It. <laughs> we'll just gloss over it. Where's, where's my bacon cop? <laughs> um, so we've got Advance next. Advance. Show you some Advance. Yes, please. Okay. So I did Primary yeah. store yesterday, not very well, with Fresh Start. Um, I won't do this panel because it's still wet and a bit tacky, but this is dry. So Advance is a waterborne alkyd. Um, this is satin. I'd say this probably... Ben, can you explain, when you say the word alkyd, what yes. does alkyd mean? Because obviously I've, I've been well, to college. Chemist, Phil. I've been to college, I know what you're on about with alkyds, but from the technical side of things, what is an alkyd paint? Do, um, I'm going to put your finger and say, anybody who knows, tell us what out. an alkyd paint is. Because I'm on the understanding that an alkyd paint is obviously... It's a hybrid, basically, yeah. It's, it's got the oil, oil content. Yeah, it's got oil in it, so it's a water-based carrier yeah. with alkyd content. So I think it's got we're covering 100% it. water-based. Um, this is a hybrid. You can tell a little bit as well by it's got a bit of a the smell. slight smell to it. Yeah. Right, I'm going to take the brush off you for that because we've got a running joke with me at the moment. Oh, let's move that. <laughs> got to sniff the bristle. I think I'll swap to this brush actually, this one's been out The merch is on its way. <laughs> so we had a chap in this morning who swears by, I won't say the manufacturer, but it's an oil-based satin wood. That's fine. Um, tried him on Scuff X, he loved the flow of it. He's got characteristics and the open time, very similar to an oil, flows like an oil, but it's water-based, non-yellowing. Um, but I think it was a little bit of a culture shock for him moving across from a fully oil-based to a water-based. So I said, why don't you try the, the Advance, which is a little bit of both, really. It's a water-based alkyd. So we gave this a go, and he was he was right at home with it. Um, again, don't please don't uh, mock my... Painting skills. Painting yeah. skills. Um, you can't I've, really see, can you? It's white on white. I've sent Ben a link to how you paint a panel door correctly. Mouldings panels. Yeah. You can see the opacity. It's hard to describe the flow of this, really. Um, have you used Advance before? I'm not. I'm a Scuff X freak. So you're Scuff X freak. That's good. Right, I'm just. I'm gonna. Get, I'm gonna right. pass the brush over to someone who actually yeah, can we've paint. Yeah, we've got a professional. I'm not, I'm not doing this justice at all. We've got a professional painter and decorator. We've got Grant from GW Decorating up in North Knotts, who's um, a big advocate for Scuff X. There's no pressure on this. Um, there'll be a link below for his um, Instagram page, so please check him out. Now, Ben, can this paint go straight onto bare wood as you're showing us, or is it more you should have put a should have put a primer on first so today we're just trying it to see what it actually looks like for the coverage opacity and more for grant to be feeling what this new paint is actually like yeah so fresh start or sticks as your primer stroke undercoat for this Oh, it's trim. And this would spray very nicely as well. Now, the big question I'm going to ask, is it a brush killer? What's it like for washing out? With it being that slight hybrid? Did you like that, Grant? Clean up soap and water. Right. Clog them together and it can Yeah, Grant's saying probably what I'm saying, it cripples your bristles. Sometimes use that, um, is it Virasol? 
Yeah. Bit of salt. Yeah, I find, particularly when we're using the John O's brush killer, it's a case that after wash out with warmish water, get the majority out, then it's um, white spirit, then methylated spirit, and then go back to some warm type of water, and that brings me brush back. But that to me is not a, an acrylic water based paint because they're hybrids. But we have tested a lot of paints recently that are nice to wash out. The scuff washes out nice. Scuff, scuff X washes out lovely. Yeah, it's still the same as it was before. Yeah, I think it's because you're a scuff X freak. Yeah, we'll just have a quick look at the scuff X. Much better brush technique than I have. Right. We've got Grant again, he's just going to... We've got unpainted. Unpainted. Yeah. Demonstrate yeah, yeah. capacity. We're going for scuff X satin now. Now this is self-priming onto a previously painted sound substrate. Um, if it's, a, it's got a high sheen to it, you would dull it off. Um, so this is obviously an unprimed door. Usually you, you would use fresh start, uh, but it just demonstrates the opacity. Um, this, this white is Chantilly Lace. Chantilly Lace. Phil's favourite colour. Yeah. Even <laughs> just even just on a bare door like that, it just flows. Yeah. Flows lovely, you know. I've got my dad with me. Have you tried any of this? <coughs> no. Yet? No, I haven't. No, I mean, I haven't. I mean, I've, I've, yeah. I've used a chantilly, I've used a super water on it. But that's. I think it's just the ease at which it flows, eh? Yeah. Do you use any of the sheen levels other than satin, or do you just stick to satin mostly? Uh, satin mostly, just yeah. the, the, the super white. Yeah. Um, but like I say, that's on bare, that's on bare wood, so it's, you know, it's... That looks really good. But after another coat, you probably wouldn't tell. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I mean, yeah. normally use like a... Yeah. I'd use like a coat or yeah, yeah. try that half yeah. prime. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah two. You can see some of the darker parts of the pine coming through a little bit, um, but yeah, it's just a That's, standard. Uncanny yeah, prime. Like you're you get... probably won't get that if you'd got a bit of a off colour, would you? No. If, if you, you were looking at a magnolia or a cream, but yeah, guardian, you unprimed. Um, that chantilly lace usually you prime with with fresh start, and then but you can see if you put let that dry with the coat. Yeah. If you, if you had a beard all that, if you primed it once yeah. and put one top coat of scuff on, you'd be done. Yeah. 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 Not yeah. Norm normally for a beard coat. Like that, you'd be priming it maybe, I don't know, twice. Yeah. I've found with a lot of whites that you're looking at three coats just yeah. because the the opacity, the yeah. coverage, yeah. particularly on arises and mouldings and things like that, you can just see it grinning through and that when you're a decorator you don't want to be thinking you've got to put an extra coat on. But, course, no, but I think one one prime and one one top top coat is cool. yeah. yeah, you get away with that. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'd agree. Yeah. Right, that's great. So I'll just now I've got a bit of focus on my camera because we haven't got the light coming in so much I'll just show you these colours there we go that's the Ben over the do we pronounce it aura? aura aura that's the Ben over the aura and you can see that's starting to dry and you've got very very little mottling a second coat would cover that lovely yeah we've got this is the regal. That's the regal. Looking really good. We like the Ben. And we've got the um, Element Guard, which is your masonry paint. So, all in all, not bad. Right. Let's go and get a drink, and I'll catch you later. Right, I came and I saw, and I've got my free goodie bag. And they're cheeky, they've given me an extra large. They said this will fit you, Phil, this extra large t-shirt. 
Yeah, I've only had one bacon cob. Anyway, right, here we are at Brewers of Mansfield and I'm just gonna stand at the door and just give a bit of a plug. Because as with all brewers, can you see me? As with all brewers, um, decorator centers, they carry a bit of everything, which is really nice because you can get your, you can get your Farron Ball, you can get your Benjamin Moore, obviously, you can get your Little Green, you can get your Sundries, which are nice. Um, whereas you go to some places and they obviously are only supplying the Sundries that they want to supply from the suppliers that are supplying them. Does that make sense? I think it does. But here we are in um, Brewers of Mansfield, and we've got everything you need under the sun, which we like the one-stop shops to get our painting. Paints, sundries, bits and pieces. So on that note, I'm gonna say thank you very much for Brewers and Nick for inviting me up here. I've been, I've seen, and I've got my free goodie bag. That's what I'm, I've come for. So um, over and out, see you on the next one.